Okay, well, I've taken some baby steps, but now I am getting really serious. I'm going to train all year repeatedly with the Kusari Gama to see how good I can get. And this is what I'm using for now. I mean, of course, a Kusari Gama is just a sickle with a long chain attached to it and a weight at the end of it. So, no, these are not, like, custom-made from Japan or anything, although both commas, both sickles, are made in Japan. Uh, the one on the right has the knotted rope for the weight, but I did stick a carabiner on there. So it flies a little bit more realistically, and at least hurts when I make a mistake, but not as much as the real weight, which I took from that broken Kasari Fundo some of you have seen in my other videos. And by the way, how much does the real weight hurt when it hits you? Uh, you'll see in this video, and spoiler alert, it's a lot. And this is one of the things that attracts me to this weapon, because of course I like unusual weapons, and it might be the strangest practical design of all time. So I think you really, really have to put in a tremendous amount of time if you want to be able to use it reliably. And is that worth it? Well, some people thought it was. So in today's video, I want to focus on one of the first findings I've made from my hands-on experimentation anyway, and that is what is alluded to in the video title, the danger of the north-south strike. And ironically, that's probably the most instinctual weapons strike there is. Bring it down, whatever it is, on top of their head. Uh, yes, it was freezing out here today, as you can tell, but I'm sufficiently warmed up, so let's get to it. I've watched just about every Kusari Gama video there is out there, and as in this screenshot and the next, you will see the north-south strike. Here it's coming down to the opponent's hands, and the next one to the top of the head. So these resources are great, but one thing I don't see in the limited material that is out there online is a teaching about what if you miss. And with this very natural instinctive strike. So let's try. Ah, nice shot to the groin. Uh, the actual metal weight would have left me a lying on the floor helpless. Kneecap upper shin also would have been quite problematic. And yeah, these sting. Well, at least my thigh protected my groin that time, but you get the point. The physics at play here are pretty obvious and I think inarguable. You are risking hitting yourself with a miss on a north-south strike. And you might be thinking, yeah, but you're only hitting yourself with some leftover residual energy, the main force already having been delivered to the ground. And aren't you the guy that says nunchaku are a very practical weapon even though you can hit yourself on the arm, just don't be a wimp about it? Well, here's the thing. The kasari fundo on the end of a kasari gama this is not an Nunchaku. Look how slow this is moving when it hits me coming up. Notice how gently I'm swinging at that springy branch up there. That was very little energy. Purely residual. Thank God it hit me on muscle instead of bone, and yeah, it hurt like hell. And here's what it did to my leg. <laughs> my knee is on the right, by the way, and my leg is pointing. Uh, off to the upper left. I mean, that really was just a fraction of the energy it would have coming back to me if I had struck the ground full force or had done an overhand swing full force. But if you've seen my other Kusari Gama videos, you know I was already aware of this, which is why it seemed to me that whenever you're striking downward, and here I've got the real weapon, when you're striking downward, you have to step to the side. That was real slow speed. Here's a little bit better, and notice it kind of turned into a little bit of a cross step, so you can make it a part of your fighting motion. But if you freeze or get tripped up or whatever, your timing is off, you are going to have some friendly fire incoming. Now you can project it forward a bit, like this. Imagine you're throwing it diagonally down through your opponent. That's safe because the inertia obviously has it skidding along the path away from you when it hits the ground. Um, but it's considerably slower. I don't know how applicable in combat that would be. And granted, we proved a moment ago that even at less than optimal speed, far less than optimal speed, it'll still hurt like hell. But I mean in terms of your opponent seeing it coming. And as you saw there, more importantly, I can still kind of hit myself with it coming back. But this strike here, I'm about to do it one more time, is something worth considering and having in your toolbox. Here's another possible mitigation strategy. Do a true north-south strike, but keep your arm extended out beyond your body. Now that would definitely require training to make natural. 
Speaking of training, <laughs> there's one of the many pitfalls of this weapon, getting tangled up with yourself. So I have one other way to try to get around this potential danger while not requiring you to remember to step to the side or swing straight down only when your arm is extended out to your side or kind of push it out forward, which robs you of speed and power. Something faster and more instinctual than those that still allows you to act immediately when you see that opening or just want to go for it. And here it is. Once twice. What it is is giving it just enough English to where instead of a 12 to 6 strike, it's just slightly off from that. So it's like an 11.30 to 5.30. So nowhere near as diagonal as a typical like 45 degree downward strike. Well, let's try tentatively with the actual weighted chain. One, two. And here's an added bonus. It's a sneaky strike. Your opponent is going to naturally expect a strike from their left side when they see your hand move across the body. Watch the fake out here. You assume the strike is going to come from the right side of my body, and instead, the weight comes pretty much straight down, but at enough of an angle that I don't have to worry about hitting myself. Even if I bounce off the ground. Like that. So I don't have to worry about giving myself a nut shot or kneecapping myself or anything like that. Here it is a couple more times, my sneakier and safer version of striking the opponent on top of the head. 